No one has more state pride than New Mexicans. The vibrant culture, bold flavors, unique history and dramatic landscapes under our Zia sun are like no other. And the people of New Mexico are a rare breed. As diverse as we are, together we breathe life and soul into this high desert land, a land that promises adventure. I'm Michael Newman, and as your host, I'll be taking you with me as I seek out the best the land of enchantment has to offer. New Mexico, Mexico feels like home. Thanks for watching another episode of New Mexico True Television. I'm your host, Michael Newman. In this episode, we're traveling through the village of Pecos, the gateway to a whole bunch of wilderness adventures. With vistas in every direction revealing shimmering aspen trees peppered throughout lush pine forests and more than 100 miles of streams and mountain lakes, its allure is undeniable. Whether along the banks of its rivers or enveloped in the shaded woodlands of its forests, the mountains of the Pecos offer us the perfect getaway, an antidote only Mother Nature can provide. So if it's downtime you're seeking, quiet days among the trees, or exploring the region's unique and fascinating history, the Pecos awaits your arrival. An hour northeast of Santa Fe on State Road 63 above Cowles is the Jack's Creek Trailhead. By the time you reach the trailhead, you'll already feel removed from civilization. And on a day like today, where the clouds hover on the treetops, to say you'll feel engulfed in nature's splendor feels like an understatement. Do you go um, hiking pretty often? Do you like going hiking? Oh my, yes I yeah. do. I was raised in Los Angeles, mm -hmm. a concrete jungle. <laughs> if somebody would have told me that I'd be living someplace like this, <laughs> right. I don't know that I could have believed him. <laughs> and this is what? Doesn't this kind of feel like paradise oh, to you? Oh, totally. I see some sky. It's trying to peek through. <laughs> See those aspens starting to change color now. But there's more than aspens in these woods. Deer count just went up to like eight or nine. Okay. There, they keep on popping out of nowhere and then disappearing. These forests are teeming with wildlife and we're not even a quarter of a mile into the hike. No, this is a beautiful trail. It is. Right in the aspens now. Mm -hmm. After descending into the aspen grove, we took some time to slow down the pace and take in some of the minute, magical elements of the forest, which only communicate themselves when you stop to listen. Beyond hiking, Jack's Creek has great campsites known for its meadows for kids to play in. Bring your smartphone for taking photos of this gorgeous scenery, but don't plan on making any calls. You are leaving the grid. And now from the pages of New Mexico Magazine. 25 miles east of Santa Fe on State Road 63 is the Pecos National Historical Park. The lofty adobe ruins rise from a pinon dotted landscape, hinting to a sprawling center of activity centuries ago, a history Carl Cordoba will be sharing with me today. The Pecos Pueblo Indians were here for a thousand years. The Spanish and uh, Francisco Vasquez de Coronado made his first visit here. Later on, the Spanish missionaries came and built this mission church and lived amongst the Indians. We had events like Stephen Kearney as he's making his march from Fort Leavenworth mm -hmm. to plant the American flag in Santa Fe came right through this valley and he essentially walked into Santa Fe, hmm. was able to claim it for the United States. Later on, the Santa Fe Trail was established. Mm -hmm. So that really opened up the migration from the east coast of the United States to the west coast in Mexico and the south. It's kind of been a meeting place, uh, in between place for many centuries, it seems like. It is, yeah. that's right. You know, we consider this a cultural crossroads. Mm -hmm. This is on the border between the Plains Indians Territory mm -hmm. and the Rio Grande Valley Pueblo Territory. Mm -hmm. And it's a low pass in the Sangre de Cristo Mountain range that allowed an easy convergence of those two different cultures to meet here mm -hmm. where the Plains Indians could bring goods such as buffalo robes and hides and meat protein and the Pueblo Indians could bring things like pottery, corn, uh, rugs, and have a, a good exchange here without one tribe necessarily having to travel very far right. or to have to go into somebody else's territory. Because that commodity, that exchange of goods was occurring here at the time that Francisco Vasquez de Coronado came through, he found this as a very hospitable uh, place. And later on, the Spanish missionaries came and built these beautiful mm -hmm. Spanish missions. The convento that we're standing in right now was this exchange of 
European culture and ancestral Indian culture kind of blending together mm. and forming a lot of what the culture that still existed in northern New Mexico today. We make our way from the ruins of this hillside to examine another chapter of history. So Carl, what's the historical significance of, of this location? Well, where we're at now is an overlook to the Battle of Glorieta that occurred during the Civil War in the 1860s. So the Confederates were moving north to take over Fort Union. Mm -hmm. The Union forces knew they could not give up that strategic point, so they met here and a battle for three days occurred. And the Confederate forces were actually winning the battle each day, pushing the Union forces back, back a little bit more each day. However, uh, a local military man by the name of Manuel Chavez, along with John Shivington from the Colorado Volunteers, outflanked the Confederates by moving up over Ro Mesa mm. and dropping down to the supply train of the Confederates down at Johnson's Ranch in Arcanoncito. By burning down all of their materials and their supplies, the Confederates knew that they didn't have the materials to continue to advance to take uh, the big battle at Fort Union. At that decisive point, the Confederate forces retreated all the way back to Texas following the Rio Grande uh, River. That's huge. <laughs> it's an integral part of the Civil War. Right. It, it uh, prevented the Confederates from getting the money that they needed in order to continue their advancement okay. and support their war efforts. So the New Mexican volunteers were like the pivotal point for the Civil War and how it could turn and change. So Absolutely. You don't hear that very often. You, you... While we've revisited multiple eras of our nation's history, there's more to come. On a nearby bluff and across an old bridge is an estate known as Forked Lightning Ranch. Architect John Garmim was hired by rodeo producer John Van Austin, aka Tex, to design a ranch house on this land in 1925. Unfortunately, Tex's finances weren't as stellar as his showmanship, and he lost the ranch, ultimately bought by Buddy Fogelson, whose actress wife, Greer Garson, hosted fabulous parties within its walls. If they could talk, I can only imagine the tales they would tell. Stop by the Kozlowski Stagecoach Stop on the property for a photo op. And don't miss the incredible exhibits at the Visitor Center for a deeper look into the site's history. For more great stories like this from New Mexico Magazine, visit NewMexico.org. Stay tuned for some time on the river. Just over half an hour outside of Santa Fe off State Road 223, you'll find a peaceful stretch of the Pecos River, the flow of the water providing an exquisite backdrop for the Pecos River cabins. These quaint cabins are situated on the east bank of the river, providing guests like myself the ultimate access point to the water. Being in a location like this has inspired me to treat myself to a private fishing guide. Okay, be careful on the rocks. Okay. Make I'm sure following you... your lead. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Remember, save the rod. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do. I'm probably making this look tougher than it actually is, but there's no way I was dropping his rod. All right, so you got a little white water pocket right, and a little spot between, then step up again, and we have a little confluence, right? Mm -hmm. It's a funnel right, of water and in. food. So everybody's coming to the same place. You know, it's a viable mm -hmm. spot, especially the, the seam in the middle. Good, and just lift your line up and watch that fly float. Let it go all the way down. Start to raise your tip up a little, swing it to the side, look again, mm -hmm. new spot. Good, lift that line up just real easy. Let it drift, oh, hit him, now, pick it up. Oh, well, <laughs> spiking, man. Actually, can you, oh, you I got him, go. you got him. <laughs> Keep your rod up, Keep your rod up. There you go. Now let him run just a little bit, okay. swing him right into me if you could shorten. Got there him. you go. Tiny guy, but that's all right. You know, <laughs> that's good. I think, fish is I fish. think through most of the, the public water, you're going to find more smaller fish. Okay. But, you know, oh, that's, that's a survivor good. right there. Yeah. <laughs> Man, they were biting. Yeah. <laughs> he loves to kiss fish, but he's never bit one. Wow, wow. Okay, now step oh. up. Step okay. up on this one. I just saw one. Yeah. There's one right there. Okay. It's right next to the tree, though. Yeah, good. Lift the line up slow. Oh, oh, check it! Yeah, there we go! Oh. <laughs> okay, I know where you're at now. <laughs> I bet you he won't eat again. I ain't got a bruised lip. Bruised lip wasn't stopping this guy, though. Hit, oh. hit. Hey! Boom. <laughs> you are lightning fast on that set. <laughs> nice. 
Shrutris was getting bored with us and decided to do his own exploring. But as for me, with fish as eager to bite as these guys are, you're gonna have a hard time pulling me away. I could stand here casting all day. And at this rate, I may be catching all day too. I think I found my new favorite fishing hole. Another favorite spot among locals for catching rainbow and brown trout is upriver between Torero and Cowles. Plenty of folks fish this river on their own, but having a guide was great for a novice like myself. And any time is good for fishing, but early April brings the hummingbirds to Pecos, and the aspens in early October are always a draw. Just 48 miles from the plaza in Santa Fe on State Road 63 is the Torero General Store. Going back nearly 70 years, this store along the Pecos River has been the long-standing final stop for campers and fishermen before entering the Pecos wilderness. I popped in to chat with the owner, Huey, and his friend, Ed. I know there's a lot of history that went down in this area, in this valley, so can you kind of give me a brief overview of how Pecos became this, you know, this getaway? All of this country for years has been used by different peoples. Mm -hmm. I mean, we go back to the Pueblo at Pecos that was a trading center. As it moves on, you get into the days of the mountain man, Kit Carson, and all that bunch that trapped and did all the things in here. The railroad goes through row Pecos Glorieta right there. That was the pass, the mining, the timbering, but also tourism. That's what really helped develop a lot of this country. Well, my grandfather came, came here from Pennsylvania back in 1906, came down to this canyon in 1908, started building a dude ranch. They had a buckboard, which is a, a horse-drawn buggy, and they'd pick the guests up at the train station in Glorietta. But at that time, when people came to the ranch, they came to stay for weeks and months. Several guest ranches developed in the canyon up here. You had Los Pinos, Mountain View, Trace Lagunas, Irvins, Valley Ranch, Martins, which is now Cow Creek Ranch on, on the other side. But there was a, a lot of them that lasted. We've got a hundred years. hundred years yeah. still running and doing the same thing and folks are still coming. Still coming to it and, and still enjoying the destination. So what, what role did like Torero play in the midst of all that? There was a mine here, a mine that actually opened up access to this country tremendously. They built the road, mm -hmm. they built the bridges, which my grandfather hated because he said it ruined his business. Oh, right. it, the, the automobile, people didn't come and stay anymore. They wanted a, an overnighter. I guess when you had to like actually work to get here, you stayed here. My dad said the, the demise of the guest ranch was air conditioning. <laughs> they could have air conditioning at home. They didn't have to get out of the heat and leave. So then my mom and dad built the original store here in 1943. We started the packing operation of sure. taking people into the wilderness. Because as folks wanted to get out of town, get back and touch yeah. the ground again, you know? Mm -hmm. so that's what's really neat about the Pecos Wilderness, the 300,000 acres of wilderness that's being preserved in its natural state. No power lines, no telephones, even right here at the store. You walk out there right now and turn your damn cell phone on, it ain't gonna work. <laughs> you know, so, that's on purpose. So once you start up this canyon, you're walking back. Mm, right. You're, you're reaching back. There's no doubt about that. You're a world removed when you make it up this far up the canyon. And after all, that's the point. Disconnect to reconnect. Up next, we reach New Peaks. Do you need a reason to hit the road? Find out about upcoming events around the state at newmexico.org. My friends and I are meeting up to do an ATV ride on the top of Elk Mountain on Forest Service Road 646 in the heart of the Santa Fe National Forest. In around 15 miles, we'll be reaching the summit, which is over 11,000 feet in elevation. Until then, this little number is going to be doing a lot of climbing for us while we take in the scenery. It's a brisk morning and the skies are crystal clear. And with it being the season for aspens changing, I'm counting on getting in some good views. This would be an old logging road that they used to take here before they made this road. And it was real rocky. And Even with a Forest Service road, it's still a bumpy ride. But I'm not complaining. That's the fun of it. And did I mention the views? Wow. We've officially entered the golden stretch of this road. And it's hard not to get distracted by the views off the driver's side. This is certainly an instance why I'm glad I'm the passenger. This is also the first glimpse we've had of how much elevation we've gained. 
and it's not long before we've risen above the tree line. Woo! An oh, awesome view. Yeah. Like, we're sitting about 11,500 around there, so, you know. Yeah. Yeah, right here to the west is Santa Fe Ski Basin. Yeah, you got the Pecos Baldy Lake up to the northwest. The city of Las Vegas is behind us to the east. Yeah, beautiful view. Panoramic views all around. Quite the payoff. Right on Main Street in Pecos is Casa de Herrera Restaurant. For over 30 years, the husband and wife team behind this operation have been cranking out homestyle favorites, their reputation for candies and desserts as serious as that of their chili. So Joanne, can you tell me a little bit about the history of, of this casa? It used to belong to my grandfather. He owned uh, the property here and he had several apartments and stuff and he owned a store and a lounge. It was yeah. probably from uh, the 30s. The 30s. Yeah. Are there stories to some of those old photos there in the back there? Yes, there were uh, uh, several people that worked for my grandfather. In fact, if you look at one of the pictures that's there, the case that's right behind him is the case that I have here in my restaurant. Wow. So uh, it's survived many, many years. Right. We've identified some of the people that are in there, mm -hmm. but some we still don't know. It's kind of neat because it starts a conversation. Mm -hmm. It starts a conversation with the elders. And to me, that's a good way to preserve the history of Pecos. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, has food and cooking kind of been part of the, that family heritage that, that you are now continuing? Actually, no. If someone would have told me I was going to be running a restaurant, I would have thought they were out of their mind. But it just so happened that when I married Jerry, he used to cook. Oh. And so when I married him, we decided to go into business. Okay. What Joanna has been too modest to mention, though, is she's the one who's making all those sweet treats up front. Oh, I took a class and started making some candy. And then I took another class and started baking. The more I did it, the more I liked, mm -hmm. liked doing it. So that's come I tell everybody. Jerry does everything with salt and I do everything with sugar. <laughs> and it seems to have worked out well over the years. Yeah, it's a good balance, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. No doubt, they've got you covered. But they're not the only kids on the block. Just up the road is Frankie's at the Casanova. Upon entry to Frankie's, the architecture and ambiance can make your jaw drop. Definitely not what I was expecting when ducking into an unassuming adobe building in the middle of Pecos. From the artwork to the fixtures, every detail oozes charm. And that goes for the guys behind it all too. Well, gentlemen, I have to tell you, this is a beautiful restaurant. You know, you have the, the old adobe, which just reminds you of old New Mexico. And it's, it looks like it's seen some days. The building goes back to about 1911. It took about three and a half years to build. All adobe, all the beams are hand hewn. Everything in here was from the local forest and stuff. It's pretty much in its original shape. I mean, there's a picture above the fireplace that shows what it looked like in 1936. It was originally called Harrison's Casanova. It was once a jail. <laughs> and I understand that the owner was also the municipal judge. Oh, wow. And there were times when the bar would be going and he would pound the gavel and say, the bar is closed, hold court, and reopen the bar. <laughs> All in one spot. All I guess back then you had, a, you had to have a multi-purpose kind of place. Right? And I believe that being a multi-purpose mm -hmm. back then was the key to the building still standing, was mm -hmm. in a small village like this, it has to have multiple purposes. Mm -hmm. That's really been the key for us through our 17 years in businesses, just recognizing that we operate in a village mm -hmm. and the village is all levels of income, mm -hmm. all different types of people and accommodating and being the center of the community. The warmth of the people running this place sets the tone for everything else. They've created an atmosphere honoring the northern New Mexican dishes they serve up day in and day out. With a few steaks and seafood options and a huge dessert menu, it's clear why it's an institution. Coming up, a place to let your head in the Pecos. To see more of New Mexico True TV, visit our YouTube page, youtube.com slash visit New Mexico. And now, here's another New Mexico True treasure. Hi, I'm Jordan Gunther, and I think Madrid is a New Mexico True treasure. It's known as a ghost town, but in absolutely no way does anything about Madrid resemble a ghost town. Madrid is probably one of the most eclectic, unique small towns in New Mexico. It's, uh, it's vibrant. It's, uh, there's always something going on. Um, their museum is phenomenal. It's, it's a true gem in the middle of nowhere in northern New Mexico. 
Uh, the Mineshaft Tavern is one of my favorite restaurants. The, uh, the artist scene in, in Madrid is phenomenal, from jewelry makers to artisans to boot makers. It's truly a small town that you can find almost everything in. They actually love the uniqueness, and they're not afraid to, to own that uniquely authentic uh, Madrid look and feel that you can only get there. I think the beauty of Madrid is the fact that it, uh, it, it beats to its own drum. When you're lucky enough to head to the Pecos, the hardest part of your mountain getaway will be deciding where to stay. Take Cow Creek Ranch, a historic guest ranch property where you and your family or friends can rent out the whole lodge or cabin and fly fish, hunt, or go horseback riding all on this expansive property. Also providing the guest ranch experience is Los Pinos, dating back as far as Cow Creek, and in whose quaint Aspen Law cabins you'll enjoy a private front porch with stunning views. Maybe a cloth foot tub, but forget a TV or landline at this quintessential mountain retreat. For more of the modern day comforts though, head to Wilderness Gateway Bed and Breakfast, where a room awaits you on the ground level of a custom log home and a bit of luxury, like a two person jacuzzi tub, goes a long way after hitting the trails. And let's not forget Pecos River Cabins, where the tumbling river provides the soundtrack for your weekend. From rustic cabins to plush adobes decked out with Italian tile, gourmet stoves, and vaulted ceilings, all tucked into an enclave of cottonwoods on the banks of the river, it's a tough call just where you will choose to stay. In my mind, they're all a solid bet. So what are you doing next weekend? 